Oh, I'm gonna die. <laughs> Uh, I'm not your witness, and you're watching Atheist Edge. Hi, welcome to Atheist Edge. I'm Courtney here with Tilden. Hello there, hello. Yay! Um, he's been a integral part of our of our operation here. He's absolutely wonderful. He provides our uh, place of of uh, recording for the last long while now. <laughs> you're gonna make me blush. He's very keep it up though. Very gracious uh, helper to our channel. Um, so he's an honorary member as well. Um, so we came together to do some uh, random questions. So uh, Jim is going to be our gracious question. Uh, a biogenesis. Feed a us, feed us. What does that mean? A biogenesis. I don't know what the that means. The beginning is. of life. Oh, okay, okay. I do have something to say for this. Okay. Um, so a biogenesis. The only thing I'll say about it is that there's. Christianity claims to have its own answer to how we got here and how everything started, and it doesn't mean that atheism or science is required to have an answer. Um, at the same time, it doesn't mean that science isn't constantly going to be striving toward that. Um, so I'm not sure if abiogenesis is a scientific theory or if it's just what we're looking for. Do you know? Uh, it's, it's something Get in. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Our, our trusty uh, student, yes, UTA please, student here. I've watched YouTube videos on this, so that's <laughs> my disclaimer. No, not an actual professor, but uh, yeah, they're, they're just trying to look for the conditions that would have led to the first RNAs actually being created, and they're saying that in the, you know, way back atmosphere where we had all these different conditions mm. and, uh, you know, solar radiation not being blocked out by the way the atmosphere is now, mm. and they just they're able to actually create RNAs using these supposed conditions in laboratories. Well, not RNAs, the building blocks for them. And yeah, I was going to say, I thought the they idea if you had an entire ocean. Yeah, so so it's a field of study then. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't know if it was I, a... I don't, I don't know. I, don't is know. It, I, I didn't know if it was equivalent to saying like the Big Bang Theory or something like that. Uh, there's there's people that are probably devoting their life to this now. Okay. Well, is, it, is it a field of study within evolution or is it a field of study in biology? Or is it... <laughs> Well, ev evolution multi, multi, yes. yeah. <laughs> e okay. evolution wouldn't really be its own, I mean, it is a, its own field of study, but their evolution is, is a culmination of multiple fields of study, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um, I don't think it would be within that field, per se. Uh, but, yeah, I, the biggest thing that I say to um, the, the response uh, to Christian, like, urges to have an answer for everything just because you've made up an answer doesn't mean it's the right one and it doesn't mean that we have to come up with the real one right away um, but it does it also doesn't mean that we're going to stop trying to find the actual truth of what of what's happened and um, and seek real knowledge Christianity has come up with a answer yeah uh, it's called the Bible oh yeah so, well, I, I mean, a real, so that, a real you know, answer. Therefore, Bible, right? So, so therefore, God and, and God of the gaps and all of that. Um, so, yeah, and, and it's sometimes, again, I think that, that I, did, I talked about this in my talk, that a lot of Christians, they've never come up against these concepts and these arguments. Um, and to them, it's just all makes sense and it all comes together. And God is is proven through everything around them just because that's what they've always been told is the case. And so um, it can be really difficult for them to start thinking about what's a real answer, what does that look like, what does that mean? Um, and if someone says, I don't know, it doesn't mean that they actually know less than you. It means that they are trying to be intellectually honest, which I think is the atheist position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would think that if they had the answer to the, that, that question, it would be in the Bible. It would say specifically in the Bible, this is how it came about. Right. Well, and it does. <laughs> but the problem is, is it accurate? Is it true? Um, and and there are many creation myths throughout history. And and. But I thought it was called Genesis, not a biogenesis. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, indeed. Jim. Death. What about death? Sucks. Exactly. This is why I'm... Not so comfortable with this format. I don't understand. Death sucks. Death sucks. Keep showing your toes. Death sucks. Yeah, I, I think. Like this format. You would think, think you would think that a god could like create it, a so. world where there was no death, but I guess mm. they're not all powerful as they're made out to be. Well, and what, and what we've learned from like cautionary tales about immortality and things like that, I think that death provides a sense of immediacy, a sense of 
uh, value to the life that we have here, um, that time is precious, that, that our uh, opportunities here are limited. And so I think it gives human life a lot more meaning than it would otherwise, because I remember as a Christian, um, this life being sort of a doormat to your real life in heaven, mm -hmm. um, it, it diminishes the value of, of what this life means and everything that you could accomplish or everything that you could make this life to be. Because if this is the only life we have, um, then, then we have to make the most of it. And, um, and so I, I do think that death, accepting the reality of death, not only helps you grieve in a healthy way, but it helps you to appreciate the time that you have. Yeah, uh, this question came up to to us when we were at a, at a protest. A guy stopped by and everything. We were talking to him, and we mentioned that one of our uh, friends had died, and he said, well, oh, do atheists grieve? I, we looked at him like, did you just uh, grill another head or what? <laughs> I said, yes, we do. Well, and it's kind of the I mean, opposite that you would think. It's like it's like asking, you know, I don't know, it's it's... A better question to me would be whether Christians grieve or not, because they don't believe that death is final. Mm -hmm. um, and and I talked about this in Women of Deconversion a long time ago. That um, we we had a, an episode on grief um, and the stages of grief that you go through when you deconvert. Um, and and I think we were talking about death in general at one point, but that death in movies becomes harder to watch when you're. An atheist and and human suffering becomes some sometimes harder to watch because it becomes very real and final and um and i think you know learning about in the news about things happening that there's there's a bigger impact on our humanity when when we think that those things are real and final and um you know the bad guy wins sometimes and and that there isn't an overarching scorekeeper and justice and and of course Christopher Hitchens would argue that that's not a good thing anyway um, but there is a level of comfort that I think Christians gather from a benevolent version of that um, that death isn't final and that we don't need to worry about evening scores because that will happen eventually um, so that's really sad yeah I wish everybody thought about death uh beyond Christianity because it is, it's, it's final. Mm. And uh, every life is, uh, is precious. Mm. So, really just just like to. Monty Python would say. Really? Every sperm is sacred. Every sperm is great. If a sperm is wasted, God gets quite irate. <laughs> I'm not going to try a British accent. I'm barely well, they didn't say every accent. life. They said every sperm is special. Well, so. mine was. <laughs> um, yeah. And the, the other thing I will say about death real quick, I know I'm talking on and on about it, but, um, but that there, I, think, I do think that our culture needs to think about it a little bit more in terms of planning for your death, planning for what you would like to happen, and planning for, mm -hmm. you know, financial things. And, and uh, if, if we can communicate our wishes and communicate um, how we're going to take care of the people after they die and how we're going to make sure that we take care of ourselves after we die financially. I think that's a, a good thing to, to be proactive about, that people need to be more um, willing to think about and talk about. I've done that. Now, if, if you die and everything, um, and they go against your wishes, hmm. how, how will that make you feel? It won't. <laughs> um, Dang it all, I thought I had you. Yeah, but I think as much as possible, I think it's, it's we want to live in a world where we treat each other with respect and, mm -hmm. and treat each other the way that we would like to be. Um, and uh, yeah, I think there's, there's a lot to the, the death thing. There's about how we feel about it, how we grieve it. And also how we deal with it. Um, there's, there's a lot around that topic. But next topic, I think. Please. Okay, boomer and ageism. Okay, boomer. Okay, boomer and ageism. Oh. Hmm. Okay, boomer. I got it now. Okay. Well, yeah. I. Mm. Next subject. 
stuff. Well, okay. Well, I mean, what can you say about this? I mean, is okay boomer a form of ageism? Okay, boomer. Hmm. Well, it is, yes, but it's yeah, just, it's just a put down. I mean, it is. I I would never say that um, no. because I'm a nice person, uh, but I do think that sometimes it's kind of like an atheist saying, "Okay, Christian." Like sometimes people say some really dumb things. Sometimes people have really messed up views about uh, what's wrong with millennials and and you know how horrible we are. Um, and there's some misconceptions on both sides. I think that if you're in one camp, you're going to demonize the other, and it's just a, a human psychology thing that we have to demonize the out group. And do, do yeah. you, I, I see it as uh, losing an argument. So the, then you just throw this in and say, "Well, I'm I'm done. I don't have any. I don't have really any content. So let me just that's a good point. Yeah, yeah drop this on you. So so yeah. So either they said something so ridiculous that you're just like. Okay, boomer. Never mind. Like I'm not gonna even touch that. Or they've said something really good they don't have a response to, and you're like, okay, fine. You know, I don't have a response. So, yeah, it could go either way. It could go where like people are being so fucking ridiculous that you don't like. You know, sometimes Trump supporters say things that I'm just like, mm, okay. Um, but just know. some of them. Or like you know, racist people will say things that are horrible, and you're just like. You're just like, okay, you, you stay over there in that corner of the world. Like, you just, you stay in South Carolina. It's okay. Um, but, yeah. It's, it can go either way. It's, it can be disrespectful. It can be, uh, if you're assuming that they're going to hold a quote-unquote boomer view just because they're that age, that's not the case. Um, but if you do experience something that, you know, somebody of that age is saying something that is very characteristic of their age level and is ignorant because of their age level, then maybe that's justified. But I think that trying to build bridges more than anything is the best way to communicate with other people. And mm -hmm. using labels like that is horrible, and I would never say that to anybody. No, nor, nor, nor would I. Yeah. Do we have time for another one? Yes, you do. Yeah. Oh, right. We're kind of a buzzing through these, aren't we? <coughs> Bonus round. You get to pick between two. Okay. Mm. Superhero movies or Jeffrey Epstein? I don't know who Jeffrey Epstein is. I do, and I don't, don't really want to know. Oh, wait, wait, the, the suicide thing? Yeah. Right, well, I don't think so go. either. Okay, well, we're just going to talk about superhero movies. Yeah, this I don't know enough about it. Who, who is your favorite superhero of all time, so far, as you know? In the movies or, or in the comics? Anything. I'd have no. to think about this too. That's why, that's why I asked you first because I got to think. I about don't. It. I'm not a big superhero person. Superhero movie I'm not person. Either. The it, the morality of superheroes is very problematic to me. Um, and I actually talked about this with Jason recently. Go ahead, Jim. As a psychologist. <laughs> what? You. Um, yes. I, uh, let me ask you. Okay. It's ubiquitous in pop culture now. Superhero yeah. movies are more popular than ever now. Okay. Uh, it, they're everywhere. Uh, okay. Every other movie is a superhero movie. What about it? What does that say about the human condition right now? Are we reaching out for something? Is there is there maybe an underlying psychological uh, something that attracts us to this super powerful type of human? Well, yes, hold on. Okay. My, my favorite would probably be Batman because I'd love to be <laughs> able to see. I'd love to be looked at that good in tats. <laughs> okay, so so I <laughs> so I, I do. Really would like does he wear tights? Batman? Yeah. Well, he he? I'll, I'll never tell. I don't know. <laughs> <But>. <laughs> um, okay, so I, to to Jim's point, I do think that um, that what makes it so popular is one thing: the escapism of a different world and a different reality, and people being seemingly invincible um, and having powers that we wish that we had. Um, also, I do think that the popularity of it has a lot more to do with like marketing and the financial backing of these movies. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think that they're as um, good as some other like critically acclaimed things, but because of the bigger budget and the bigger promotions and the marketing and um, basically lobbying of these movies, uh, they they get much more popularity than some of the other ones um so yeah i don't think that that it's it's a it's a 
necessarily about quality or about people. I like superhero movies. I'm not saying they're not quality, but they're a certain genre that isn't for everybody. But I, th I do think that their popularity has a lot more to do with the backing of them than, than it's a, a psychological symptom, I don't think. And, and I understand most superheroes, but I watched the movie Badass. Can someone explain that one to me? Badass. Kick badass. Kick-ass? Oh, is yeah. it kick-ass? Is it badass or kick-ass? <laughs> I was like, what is badass? Okay, kick-ass. Can uh, someone explain that to me? Okay, I don't okay. remember it. Come on in. I did it. Kick-ass was the exact epitome of what y'all were just talking about. Okay. You have a totally regular dude who's just a total weeb like you or me, and he goes Speak out there yourself. and kicks ass. I'm sorry, Batman. Okay, sorry. <laughs> and he goes out there and kicks ass because his nerve endings die or something. Cool. But it's it's hilarious. It's a great movie. Now, I think Deadpool, I did see that. Deadpool. Deadpool. Yes. That but is Deadpool, my superhero Deadpool right there. Deadpool is like it's almost like an X-Men. Like it's a lot of like like experiments uh on somebody to make them like super indestructible. Uh that's not like the classic hero superhero story is about like like you said like an an ordinary person discovering something about them that makes them extraordinary and makes them able to accomplish things and settle scores. It's kind of a vigilante thing too. Uh, mm -hmm. But the it's almost like, you know, Dexter is kind of a superhero, right? He's got a skill set. Like, sounds like Taken, but he's got a skill set that's very dangerous for people that are his enemies. Um, and he's a scorekeeper. He's a, he's a vigilante. Um, and so I really, really love Dexter. Um, but there is... Um, for me, the superhero movies are prob are annoying to me because they focus a lot more on action uh, and a cer what a certain audience would like than on story quality, acting quality. Um, they're bigger budget, but they're also like they use that on action and and stuff like that, which is has its own uh, place in genres. But it's not my favorite genre because I go to movies for story quality cinematography, directing quality, and acting quality, and it's it's not their focus. So I don't blame them for not having that, but it's not my cup of tea. Yeah, the only thing, other thing I want to say about superhero movies is there are not enough superhero women movies. Um, I really like the costumes, but I do know my it. favorite superhero, a lot of people will say not a superhero, but he is, for us boomers, that is Red Green. <laughs> what? Who's that? You have to look it up. I'm, oh, okay. I'm a boomer. I'm sorry. Okay, I did. I thought there this was is a boomer superhero. I don't know superheroes in general a lot of the time. But However, I'll say Red Green can do anything with duct tape. That is his special um, skill. That sounds really familiar. I think I do know what you're talking about. Maybe mm -hmm. it's an ancient. It's an ancient memory of mine. Thank you for being. I don't know. Real in the TV show. I don't know. It sounds like a. Anyway, um, so. The other thing about superheroes that's kind of problematic to me is the morality of it. Um, is mm -hmm. kind of taking things into your own hands, the vigilante thing about like, you know, not having a jury and not having judges to decide what should happen to you. Um, but the other part of the morality that's really annoying is things like classic Batman stories where um, a long time ago the Joker was sort of something that's kind of annoying, something that is problematic for society but not necessarily killing anybody. And so Batman being really restrained with how he reacts to that in terms of not killing Joker and only bringing him to justice made sense. But in the newer versions of Batman where Joker actually kills a lot of people and he's like very dangerous, um, killing him in that context would be a moral action to me because he's just going to keep killing people. He's just going to be horrible. Um, and even though I love the Joker, he's very interesting. Uh, I think that the morality of Batman or any superhero refusing to kill the enemies and, and only dealing with justice in a certain way um, is very problematic. However, I'm not for the death penalty. And and I would, yeah. Should I, would I explain say, that? I, I would, I would say with uh, superheroes, I've never watched, I never read comics. I really mm. do not get into superhero movies. They just yeah. do not do anything for me. Um, the, the storyline, the plots, they're, they're just. It's like, we have these criminals, and everybody knows that the criminals are there, mm. and it's only the superheroes that can deal with them. And I just yeah. do not 
like you said, the vigilante, vigilante uh, hmm. justice. Yeah. Uh, that's, so that's not how we live in this yeah. this reality. And I guess since we have time, I think I should qu clarify the the uh, the death penalty thing because I the only reason that I say that I'm I'm for the superheroes killing people in the context that it's very clear that they're just going to keep harming other people and killing other people. It's like a lesser evil to me. Uh, but I don't, I'm not for the death penalty just because our, our legal system isn't perfect and there is always the possibility of someone being put to death that didn't actually do that. And the other part of that is about, you know, how accountable can we hold them for their actions and blah, blah, blah. Like that's, that's another video. But um, free will from Sam Harris is is a very problematic thing for our legal system so it's another topic death penalty yes it's uh it's a moving target right now uh mm. before i was for the death penalty um but i think i'm changing my mind on that oh, well, as, sorry, as we go on real quick christians tend to be for the death penalty and atheists and humanists tend to not um okay just a statistic for that. I might be a uh, anomaly, anomaly then. Don't know yet, but it, I think it really depends on what. Like uh, the person that uh, blew up the Oklahoma City, the Oklahoma, Oklahoma City bomber. Mm. Uh, yes, no. for sure. That's In my thing. mind, I, I'm still not. Hmm? Um, I'm, I, I'm not going to say the name. I don't think the name should be said. So, the only thing that makes me not for that is the the let the more that we understand how people get to the place that there are in their life and how they get to a point where they do what they do, um, the more that we're going to understand through neuroscience that we are the product of our genetics and our experience. And so, holding people accountable is still important, but understanding the context and the reason behind what happened and how it happened and how to prevent it is a bigger question that I think our legal system ignores. Um, I think our legal system depends on people being doing things within their free will and I don't think that that's the way that our human psychology actually works. So I think we do need to revisit um, structuring our legal system to account for that. And for reasons like that, that's why I'm wavering. Yeah. Okay. Well, we could talk about this forever. We might do another video on that topic because it's very interesting. Uh, but for now, like and subscribe. Thank you so much for a bit for watching. Bye bye. Bye bye.